Four ITV companies are to lose their license to broadcast. Carlton Television will take over from Thames and a thousand jobs will be lost. TVAM will go. Its boss calls it a black day for British broadcasting. And nearly a hundred more hospitals and health units will opt out of local health authority control. Good evening. The auction of commercial television licenses has produced the biggest shake-up in ITV's history. The biggest company, Thames, the most profitable company, TVAM, and the company serving the wealthiest region, TVS, will all stop broadcasting at the end of next year, and their licenses will be handed to newcomers. The Independent Television Commission judged the bids on the basis of the money offered and the quality of the programmes. The decision by the Commission means four changes in the ITV network. The National Breakfast Channel, TVAM, has lost its licence despite being the most popular of the early morning shows. It was outbid by Sunrise, a consortium including London Weekend Television and The Guardian newspaper. Thames TV, the biggest ITV company which makes Minder and The Bill, has lost its London weekday licence to Carlton Television, a major production company which bid more. In the south of England, TVS put in the highest bid, but the Commission decided they couldn't afford it and awarded the licence to Meridian Broadcasting. The same happened in the southwest. The holders there, TSW, bid highest, but lost out to West Country TV. The ITC has given licences to three existing companies, even though they made lower bids. That means Granada retains its licence for the North West, as does London Weekend Television, which makes Blind Date and the South Bank Show, and Grampian in North East Scotland. Another six companies retained their licences as the highest bidders in their regions. They're Tyne Tees, Ulster, Yorkshire, HTV, Anglia and Channel TV. Three licences were uncontested, and so Scottish TV, Border and Central will stay in business. The champagne was out at Britain's newest and largest ITV company. Carlton Television's bid more than £43 million a year to oust Thames Television. Well, naturally, we're very pleased at the result. We felt that we had uh, put forward a, a very high-quality application, and we're looking forward to the, the challenge of building a new broadcasting service for London for the 90s. Carlton's the brainchild of one of Britain's richest men. Michael Green made his fortune supplying television companies with high-tech equipment and programmes, like Inspector Morse. Go on, Lewis. We're here to arrest you, sir, for the murder of John Mitchell. Thames Television has lost the fight to keep its franchise. A thousand jobs are to go as the company switches to independent production. The independent Thames staff were devastated. We bid the maximum amount of money that we felt uh, that license, the London weekday license, was worth to Thames Television, uh, bearing in mind the very bumpy ride that uh, Channel 3, the new ITV, is going to have during the um, next 10 years. Thames will now slim down to become just an independent producer. Unions blame government resentment of Thames's outspoken current affairs programmes for the legislation which sealed the company's fate. Well, we're appalled. We think that in large part it's due to a vindictive piece of legislation passed by this government following the excellent Thames television programme Death on the Rock. The highest bid for Thames's licence came from Richard Branson, head of Virgin, but his programme plans weren't thought good enough. He, like other losers, may now ask the courts to review the Independent Television Commission's decision. Well, we obviously think that the ITC are wrong and, and it's going to be a long, laborious process, but we, we have decided, we, we, because we genuinely feel they're wrong, that we are going to go to the courts. The Commission had to give licences to the highest bidders, provided their programmes were of high enough quality and they hadn't bid more than they could afford. It's clear the Commission used its discretion to the full to weed out bidders who didn't come up to scratch. Today, the Commission said less money than had once been feared would be leaving ITV for the Treasury. The programme makers of the 15 Channel 3 network companies will have nearly the same money to work to as under the current levy system. Two ITV companies lost because they bid too much. Southampton-based TVS bid £59 million, but the licence went to Meridian Broadcasting, backed by Labour peer Lord Hollick, another self-made millionaire. And TSW's managing director had to break the news to his staff that their £16 million bid had been ruled too high as well. We made the highest bid because those were the rules, and we've lost. 
the whole thing is like Alice in Wonderland. We're deeply disappointed, um, but I'm most of all disappointed with the people in this company who worked so hard during this last difficult 18 months. Brookside producer Phil Redmond was also angry. He bid four times more than Granada Television, but was rejected on quality grounds. Granada was celebrating. Their £9 million bid means Coronation Street will stay on ITV and they'll have plenty of money to spend on new programmes. The system has created anomalies. Some of the richer companies will end up paying much less than some of the poorer. Central Television bid just £2,000 a year for a region with advertising revenue of more than £230 million. Meridian bid more than £36 million for a region with an income of nearly £200 million. Yet LWT's bid less than £8 million. Its income will also be around £200 million. Amid the celebrations at London Weekend, there was criticism for a system which resulted in London rival Thames, a widely admired linchpin of the ITV network, losing out. A lot of the MPs who voted for this, particularly Conservative MPs, who now want to disown it, should actually be held to account. This was a daft system. After all the upheaval, the ITC hopes viewers will notice little difference. But the wide discrepancies in the bids means the ITV network faces years of tension between rich companies and poor ones. And in 1994, the companies who've won today become liable to take over. And a whole new form of bidding could begin again. TVAM said it was deeply disappointed to have lost the breakfast franchise. The company, which has held its license since 1983, said its bid had been proper and sensible. Michael Sullivan reports. There had been lingering hopes at TVAM that the company's franchise would be renewed, but it was not to be, and this morning Bruce Gingell, the company's chairman, emerged from his office with many of his staff shaken and resentful. The £40 million pound bid was a proper and sensible bid given the exigencies of the, exigencies of the business. I do not believe that Sunrise will be a profitable company. I predict that Sunrise will be bankrupt in 1994. We did not deserve this. We deserved special consideration yes. for our achievements. That has not happened, and I feel gutted. Five well-known television faces went into the launching of TVAM. Robert Key, Angela Rippon, David Frost, Anna Ford and Michael Parkinson celebrated their first early morning broadcast in February 1983. But internal disagreements and financial difficulties were to set in in a matter of weeks. Peter Jay resigned as chairman. A month later, Anna Ford was fired. So too was Angela Rippon, both for airing their grievances in public. Financial and management crises dogged TVAM for several years. It challenged the unions and locked out many of its staff in the process. But as 1991 arrived, it was able to claim financial stability and an established place in the risky business of commercial early morning television. That was not enough to save it. At their victory press conference today, the principals of the new franchise holders outlined their plans for 1993. The sort of style we were looking for was warmth with authority and in the big document we did actually describe a sort of set which would be come to our table sort of set. Not a desk and not a sofa, but something in the middle. But David Frost, one of TVAM's founders, expressed the bitterness of the losers. I remember that when I was at school, I was always told that uh, the important thing is not the winning, but it's the taking part. I didn't believe it then, and I don't believe it now. Many of the stations which lost their licenses will become independent producers, hoping to sell their shows to other broadcasters. Programmes such as Thames Television's The Bill and Minder could be bought by the new companies, satellite channels, or even the BBC. When commercial television started in 1954, it was described as a licence to print money, a reputation which has dogged the industry ever since. Mrs Thatcher decided the restrictive working practices and overmanning, for which ITV became notorious, had to end, and she came up with her franchise system. A radical shake-up of independent television had been urged in the Peacock report five years ago. Leaner, more efficient companies producing good quality programmes were supposed to emerge. It hasn't entirely gone to plan. Nobody envisaged Central TV would retain its franchise for a cash bid of a mere £2,000 a year. But today, Central was unapologetic. Some people believe that we were lucky to be unopposed. Uh, some people believe that we were clever to be unopposed, and I don't think it's for me to make the judgment. I think it must be for others who understand the system to decide whether we were just lucky or clever. I don't mind. I think it's results that count. 
Central and other companies which submitted low bids hope to maintain their range of programs. But the question is whether others amongst today's winners with high bids can keep their promises. In the short term, viewers will be most concerned about the fate of popular shows like TVS's Ruth Rendell Mysteries and Thames Television's The Bill. They'll be sold to whoever wants them, including possibly the BBC. There aren't very many programmes that exist that I would want. There may be one or two. My main interest will be in new programmes from new suppliers. People who in the past have not been able to make programmes for us will now be able to make programmes for us, and I hope they will offer their best work to us. Many of the independent producers welcome today's changes, which will bring them commissions from the new franchise holders. But they'll be looking for guaranteed successes. They'll be wanting successful programmes. They'll be wanting programmes that get high audience figures. And um, I think that what that will mean is that if a programme doesn't perform immediately, it won't get a second chance. It'll be much more like America, where if a programme doesn't get the right audience, it gets taken off. All current ITV companies will retain their licences till December 1992. So the next 14 months will be a testing time for winners and losers.